Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a sci-fi, thriller film from 2018, titled Replicas. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A helicopter carrying a precious load flies onto the island of Arecibo, Puerto Rico. William is waiting in his office for the cargo to arrive. The helicopter lands on the property of Bionine Industries and instantly the entire facility is being informed of its arrival. William joins Scott and Margaret as they walk toward the experimental laboratory. He asks them if the donor has signed the necessary documents. Ed hears the announcement, grabs his things and heads on there as well. The donor is being placed and unpacked in the laboratory next to a robot body. William and Ed talk about the details of the donor's death, then proceed with the experiment. Ed checks the donor's cortex activity and declares him to be viable. William concurs with the findings and tells everyone that his biological brain will be replicated inside of a synthetic brain. He tells Ed to begin the process. The neural probe designed to perform the task is engaged and the process of transferring the soldier's brain begins. William initiates the neural imprint and works on the application of the human mind onto the synthetic one. He activates all of the functions of the mind and tells Margaret to energize the body. The replica awakens and William addresses it by name as it starts moving. It asks who he is and William explains that he has transitioned into a synthetic brain. While coming online, it begins to freak out and rip itself apart, tearing out part by part, until William shuts the subject down. William speaks to Jones about the progress they've just had. Jones isn't impressed that the subject spoke for the first time and tells him that they need bigger results to hold on to the shareholders of the company. William tells him that his family had made too many sacrifices for his life's work. He promises Jones that he is very close to a breakthrough. Later, William drives home and meets his wife Mona in front of the house packing the car for a trip. He rushes inside and sees that his kids Matt, Zoe and Sophie aren't packed yet either. Ed walks into their house and Sophie gives him her pet fish, telling him not to overfeed him. He asks William if he talked to Jones and if he got fired yet. Mona overhears them talking as Ed explains that the subject ripped itself apart. However, William interrupts him and tells her that it spoke. She says that if it could speak then it could also feel and that he shouldn't bring people from the dead until he works everything out. Since, Mona is a doctor she doesn't like that people might be suffering in his trials. They pack the car and he tells her that he's on the verge of a breakthrough, but something is preventing the synthetic to achieve consciousness. Mona says that they might be missing a soul. William doesn't think so, saying that it's all neurochemistry. She hates his answer and tells him that maybe he's losing sight of what's right and wrong. Ed greets them off. Later, they're driving in the rain and almost hit a truck. It's a close call but they're fine. Suddenly, a tree hits the car and kills Mona, then William drives off a cliff and into the water. He regains consciousness and checks if anyone is alive. No one, apart from him, has survived the crash. William doesn't call an ambulance, but instead he called Ed. He's brought their equipment there and follows William to the bodies. William asks him to help him, but Ed thinks that they should call the police. Eventually, Ed changes his mind and helps William transfer the minds of his family into the equipment. They get to the facility and Ed tells him that there is a reason why he hasn't made human clones yet, because they never turn out right. He asks William if he's prepared to terminate the process if something goes wrong. William doesn't give a straight answer, he just wants to do it. Ed shows him the pods in which he could replicate the bodies, but he's worried that William still hasn't perfected the process of transferring the mind. They get to the bodies and William pleads with Ed not to share what has happened to anyone, furthermore, he asks him to get rid of the bodies. He agrees and tells him that he'll meet him back at the house. When Ed arrives there, he opens the truck and William sees that there are only three pods to make the bodies. He can't choose which member of his family to resurrect so he writes their names on a piece of paper and asks Ed to pick. He refuses to do that as well and William needs to choose himself. The paper he's taken out of the bowl is Zoe. Later, Ed explains to him how he should take care of the pods and how to maintain the chemical balance inside, but the most important thing is to maintain the energy in the pods. They must never go out of power. William however doesn't have a backup generator, so he finds a lot of car batteries and attaches them to the pods. Ed tells him the clones will need 17 days to come out and he has until then to give them consciousness. He asks him what will happen to Zoe. William says that he'll delete her memory from their drives and they'll never remember her. Later, he's seen deleting the memory of Zoe from the minds of the others. But, the hard drive with her consciousness is still active. A few days later, Ed is at work and runs into Jones, who asks him about William not showing up for work. He lies about why he's not there, then Jones tells him to inform him that if they don't see progress with the synthetic soon, they will get shut down. Ed calls William to tell him that, saying that if they get shut down, the company will look for the expensive equipment that is now in his possession. William tells him that he needs to come to the house and watch the pods so he can go to work. As soon as he settles at work Jones pays him a visit and doesn't seem too concerned that he might be sick. On his desk he sees Zoe's drawing and when he goes back home he has it with him. 
As he's walking to his front door he runs into Matt's teacher who has come to check up on him because he hasn't been to school in five days. Ed has handled that situation by telling her that the boy has chicken pox. Then he asks William why he hasn't called the kids school and Mona's work to tell them something, as if he was expecting that no one would notice his entire family disappear. Later, he takes out all of their laptops and phones. He uses them to email the kids school and also to text with his children's friends, making it look like they're still alive. Meanwhile, Margaret is overseeing the reparations on the robot body. William is working from home, trying to find a way to transfer the mind from one body to another. He runs an unsuccessful simulation and is beginning to lose hope. The clones are almost ready. Ed keeps covering him at work and he keeps running one simulation after another. 17 days since the accident, Ed comes to William's house to get the clones out of the pods. William tells him that he's not ready yet because he doesn't know why the last experiment failed. Ed explains that every moment they stay in the pods they continue to age so waiting for him to figure it out isn't an option. William decides to sedate them so he could keep their minds in a blank state. Ed tells him that he can only keep them sedated for 72 hours and no more. They start draining his wife's pot and she starts breathing by herself. William sedates her instantly. Ed is excited that their experiment worked. Later, they set up force for the clones and Ed leaves, saying he'll come back tomorrow to check up on them. William continues to go through the footage of the previous experiment and still has no clue why it failed. That night, he's ready to terminate his wife, when he gets a call from Jones. As he's talking to him he notices that each time he touches Mona's clone, her heartbeat goes up. When Ed arrives to the house, William tells him that he's figured it all out. He takes him up to Mona and shows him what he's found out. Then he explains that the reason why the brain transfer doesn't work is because it's not in its own body. When they put it in a synthetic brain the mind freaks out when it can't find its own flesh. The solution to the problem of transferring the mind into a synthetic one is to trick it into thinking that it's in its own body. And it should be even simpler with his family because the bodies are their clones. They get ready to initiate the process of transferring Mona's mind into the body of the clone. William coordinates the uploading process, then initiates the imprint. When it's done, Ed freaks out that nothing is happening, when she suddenly begins to convulse. She wakes up and recognizes him, so he puts her back to sleep until he does the same with the kids and prepares the house for them. At the end of the day, after all of it is done, Ed leaves and tells him that they'll see each other at work. William gets back to the house and begins to clean it up and get rid of the evidence of everything that happened. Lastly, he needs to get rid of all of Zoe's things and make it look like she never existed. He packs all of her things and throws them away. Later that night, he lies down in bed next to his wife. William wakes up the next day and finds Mona gone. When he rushes downstairs he sees them all having breakfast like nothing has ever happened. Mona says that she feels great and goes out for a run. The kids ask for pancakes and he makes some for them. Mona is jogging when she suddenly just an ache in her abdomen. When she gets back, Sophie pours milk in a cup and they see that it's curdled. Mona says that she just got it the other day. William gets a call from Ed, telling him that they have an incoming donor at work and that if he doesn't want their secret exposed he should be there. He tells the clone family that he has to leave for work and they don't see anything wrong about that, but Mona does find his behavior strange. William gets to work. Him and Ed are preparing the donor for the transfer, but he deems him non-viable because he doesn't want to make another one go through the phase of rejection again and the suffering that it might bring. Jones is breathing down their necks and Ed is upset that they didn't do it. William gets the idea to transfer his own mind into the synthetic brain, so he takes the transfer equipment to the toilet and performs the transference protocol on himself. Meanwhile, Sophie and Mona look for their cell phones and they can't find them anywhere. Mona feels strange. Back at the facility, William finds Ed and tells him what he did. He explains that he will write an algorithm which will help bridge his imprint to the artificial body, effectively tricking the synthetic brain that the body is his. The added benefit of it being him inside that body will be that he will be able to establish himself as the baseline for the transferred consciousness. William gets back home that night and finds Mona upset, immediately telling him that she feels like something is wrong with her. She can't remember a lot of things that happened during the past few weeks. He comforts her and tells her that she should rest. He goes to the basement and writes the algorithm. The drive with his consciousness is set next to Zoe's. Later, Sophie has a nightmare about her mom dying and calls for her but William comes in her room and tells her that she just had a bad dream. He takes her back to the basement and overwrites her memory so that it excludes the memory of them dying. Mona catches him there and asks what he's done to Sophie. She wants to know the truth. William tells her that he brought them back from the dead. They have a conversation later on and she asks him how he could do that. He tells her that he couldn't bear loosing them and that he had to do it. She understands. The next day, the family meets with Ed at the market. Mona thinks she sees something and almost remembers Zoe. They have dinner together that night and William asks them if they should move back home. Sophie asks who Zoe is, telling him that the name is scribbled in her closet with a crayon. 
The three of them begin remembering little bits about her and Mona confronts William about it. He tries to lie to her, but she sees right through him. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. William opens the door for Jones who greets Mona and asks for a quick word with him. He tells him that he knows everything about what he has done and calls his family subjects of the trial in possession of the company. Jones isn't ready to have them walking around like everything is normal, fearing the consequences if someone finds out about them. William tries to negotiate with him by telling him that he knows how to get the synthetic brain to work. Unfortunately, Jones isn't after that. He explains that the company isn't even a biomedical one, but is actually part of the weapons industry. Jones has another plan for his findings. He tells him to give him the algorithm then say goodbye to his family. William goes to get the algorithm and Jones texts to assassins to get ready. When he gets back, he tries to drug Jones but just ends up knocking him out. He destroys the algorithm and explains everything about Zoe to Mona and about the company that he works for. William tells her that they need to run. They get into the car and escape before the assassins realize what is happening. Jones wakes up and sees the destroyed algorithm, realizing that it's unsalvageable. One of his men comes in and shows him the tracker they have on the family. He tells him not to shoot them in the head. Simultaneously, a car starts chasing the family, ramming into them. They quickly manage to escape. William tells Mona that the trackers are inside of them, attached to the central nervous system and that they can't get them out. Mona has another idea about that and tells him to drive to the clinic where she works. When they arrive, Mona gets them in a room and tells Sophie to get on the bed as she prepares a defibrillator. She explains that she can fry the trackers that way. Meanwhile, the assassins arrive at the hospital and see that one tracker goes dark. Mona places the defibrillator on Matt's chest next and shocks him. The assassins kill the security guard, as William is getting ready to shock Mona. Her tracker disappears and the assassins don't find them. The family escapes the hospital. Jones calls someone. William has driven them to the marina and goes to check if he can get to Ed's boat. While he looks for the keys, the assassins arrive at the marina and grab the kids and Mona. He sees them being taken away but doesn't get to them in time. Ed is at the office and Jones hands him back his boat keys as Mona and the kids are being taken inside. He tells Mona that William just needs to cooperate and that everything will be alright. She says that they'll just kill them. Meanwhile, William arrives at the facility. Ed explains how everything with Jones went down, telling her that he was in on it from the very beginning. William walks in and Ed apologizes to him. Then he tries to negotiate with Jones, who kills Ed to make his threats more powerful. William recreates the algorithm for Jones and begins the imprinting process inside of the synthetic brain. He energizes the body without anyone's knowledge. It begins to move and breaks through its restraints. William goes back to Jones and gives him the algorithm. Just as Jones is getting ready to kill Mona, the robot walks inside, saying that he's there to protect his family. The assassins shoot at him, but it tears through them like butter. The family gets in the car and is prepared to leave, but William can't just leave the robot behind. Mona tells him to go. He stops it from killing Jones right at the nick of time. The two of them converse and the robot says that the body feels like it's his own. Jones tells him that even if they kill him, the company will still go after them. William and the robot offer Jones a deal that he can't refuse. The robot tells him that he should go with the family and that it should stay back and deal with Jones. It makes an imprint out of Jones's mind. 17 days later, a clone is ready to get out of its pod. The family is having a vacation on a beach and William brings Zoe to them. Mona embraces her fondly. Some time later, Jones is in Dubai selling William's invention to a rich old man. The robot is the one that does the work for Jones. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.